Welcome to Watercolor Step-by-Step. Step. This is lesson number 101. We're painting balloons. This is the painting you will finish during this demonstration. Okay, so let's get started on the balloon painting. I have my uh, paper here with the image printed on it, and I have my paints. These are semi-moist, and this is the brush that came with it. I like to start with the red at the bottom, and this is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, brown, and black. And I seldom use black, but if you mix the black with uh, this yellow, it makes an olive green. I'll show you that as we go along. I have paper napkins here that I use to wipe my brush off. Um, also have a mason jar with my water. You can use anything uh, that you want, even a, a paper cup. So we're going to start off, I'm going to paint uh, this one yellow and this one yellow, but I'm also going to make the yellow go over these two here. So all three of these are going to start out yellow, but these two will be painted over by these two. Uh, with those colors, which will change the yellow. So it'll give it a, a variety uh, in the painting. So first we're going to start with putting some water into this palette. So we have enough paint uh, mixed up to paint all of the areas uh, that I just showed you. I'll move that over here. up some yellow and put it in here. Now the more uh, pigment you put into uh, the water mixture uh, the darker the yellow is going to be and uh, typically the yellow is the lightest color and sometimes you have to paint more than one um, layer of yellow so you paint the yellow and let it dry. So I'm going to get started just washed my hands, uh, which removes the oil from my hand. So if I didn't and I put it down on the place where I'm gonna paint watercolor, then the pigment would would uh, not go onto the paper. Uh, the pigment would just uh, be a wet, pushed away from it like oil and water separate. So I'm gonna get started. Uh, since I'm right-handed, I'm starting on my left and will paint towards my right. If I was left-handed, I would start over here on this side, but it, you ha can do whichever is most comfortable for you. And we'll put some of this on there and come down over to here. Paint this whole one here, solid yellow, and down into the end of the balloon. Now we'll have stringers coming down from the uh, balloon, um, and we'll do that towards the uh, end of painting the, all of the balloons. So I also turn mine around, my paper around, so that I can make the curve easier like that. Um, if you can do the other way, if you can paint it uh, all in one way, then feel free to do it that way. But uh, it makes it easier for me to curve around in that direction. So that's why I turn my paper, you'll have see me do that a lot during this uh, painting session. So this is considered transparent watercolor. Uh, there's also an opaque, which is kind of like poster paints. And on there you can paint uh, light over dark or dark over light. In transparent watercolor like this, 
you have to paint your light colors and then you go to the darker colors. Um, what'll happen is if, uh, if you paint a dark color and then you try to go over it with say a yellow, it typically doesn't alter that dark color very much. So I'm gonna paint this other one while I'm upside down here. And I need to make sure I'm doing the right one. That is this one right here. Now, uh, if I go too fast and you can't keep up uh, with uh, where I'm painting, just pause the video and um, catch up and then go ahead and start uh, the video again and continue on. One of the things that uh, watercolor uh, does is, especially on this cardstock, it has a tendency to dry rather quickly. And um, so you'll see me go back over some of these places as well. And I mean, that's a good thing about watercolor is you can, it dries and you can go on to the next layer and uh, paint uh, the other layers as well. So I'm going to paint this one in orange now. And so I wipe my brush and then rinse it out clean before I start a new uh, color. And I think I'll put it right there. And do this. Now, uh, as I mentioned, these paints are semi-moist. So, uh, one of the things that you can do to make them even uh, easier to get the paint out is you can uh, put a drop of water into each one of these. So while your brush is clean, you just dip it into the water and, and hit it, you know, to let it drop into each one of these before you begin to paint, and that will soften it up. So you can see right in here, it's starting to dry quickly. And so I have to keep going over the edge of it to keep the, uh, to keep the, the pigment from settling. And the pigment will settle on this particular stock. Um, it will settle pretty quickly. So uh, you have to move uh, kind of fast with it. And although it's not a bad thing if you like the look, uh, there are a lot of artists, and if you saw some of my tropical paintings, uh, you would see that there's hard edges in there. See how this is uh, divided here? And I will leave that to make the leaves look like, um, you know, the, the ribs of the leaf. And it doesn't look bad. I've painted this uh, particular demonstration uh, a few times now and some of my leave uh, with uh, the strokes in there like this see I'm going back over that and it doesn't look bad it actually adds a little bit of uh, a variety to the painting now you'll still be able to see these um, uh, black lines in here uh, but that's not a bad thing uh, a lot of the artists in the past, uh, famous artists, would, would draw in pencil first and then paint over that. Typically, you draw um, lighter and, um, and so that you don't have really dark lines. A lot of this will fade by the time we're through. It'll only really show around the uh, yellow ones. So that's the orange one. So we're going to go ahead and paint this one in red, and I'm going to put this 
in here to get a good red. And I'm gonna continue to paint the red over this yellow part too. Yellow and red make uh, orange. So I have my color chart here, which uh, I just I like to have it on my desk when I'm working. It just shows, here's your red, your blue, and your yellow. So if you mix yellow and red together, you're going to get orange. If you have mostly red, and you mix a little bit of yellow in it, you'll have a red orange. Whereas if you have a lot of yellow and very little red, you'll get a yellow orange. So uh, that's kind of why I keep it there so I can uh, go back to it and reference it. That's the wrong one. Rinse that out. We're doing the red this time. Now, you notice that that's a very deep, rich red. And here, because it's diluted, it's looking pink. So the more pigment you put on there, the darker it's going to be. I'm not going to do it as dark as the red because I want the yellow to show through as well. So I'll start here. Now, if you don't like the lines in here, um, you can draw these images and, and then use a, a light eraser to, um, you know, to erase them back even lighter and um, then they'll disappear. It's a personal preference about the, the lines itself, so whatever you want to do. Now, you also uh, can look at this, um, you can also look at this uh, video more than once. Uh, it's uh, available to you to uh, go ahead and replay it. And it's probably not a bad idea to do that because you'll learn some of the things, some of your mistakes, and you can go back and redo it and you'll learn a little bit more each time. So you see how this is changing the color of the paint that I'm putting on here. And I'm going back over it. It's making an orange. Now it's a different color orange than this orange up here. So it's uh, it gives you some variety in the painting. I'm gonna put these lines in here to have a little bit of variety in it. Okay, so we use the red, put it over the yellow, that makes orange. It's a different orange than this one here. Uh, so it adds a little variety in your painting. Okay, so the next one I wanna do is the blue one. Oh, there's a red right here. I could continue on with that red, but since I stopped, I'm going to let that dry a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and do this blue, and then the blue will also go over that, um, uh, go over that yellow, and that's going to make a green. This little color wheel uh, is really helpful to, if you're wanting to make a color, is use, you take your yellow, and your blue and you make green again add more yellow you make a yellow green so i don't uh, it's a handy little device you don't have to have it you actually can play with these colors and do it uh, mix them together and uh, see all the colors that are available on this color wheel i uh, will have a later session or demonstration about how to do your color charts where you mix one color with another and 
that way you have a printed uh, sheet of what this color and that color mixed together looks like. Also, when you put uh, more water in it, you dilute it down and make it lighter, so it almost creates an even uh, another color, or more than one. It's turning out to be a really nice blue, or green, I mean. So I'm gonna put start that over here. See the difference, the blue, and how it turns that? Really like that. Again, if you want to make uh, the red darker, you would just go over this red with another layer. Now we're going to be going back over all of these and making the left or the right edge uh, darker to give it some form, like the light is passing around it. And uh, so you'll have dark areas and light areas. So one of the things you can do is while you're doing that, you can put this dark around the edge where you want your shadow. And then let it blend in with the rest of that. Um, that's called working wet into wet. And um, it just makes the, the balloon look like it's three-dimensional. So I'll rinse that out, and now I'm going to blend this more so it's a nice smooth, see, like that. Yeah. While I have this blue, I'm going to go ahead and put in one of the squiggles, and we start that like that. Let that dry. So... We use the blue over the yellow to make it a green. It's going to be a lot different than that green that you see uh, when I put that one up here, I think it is. So I went over the yellow a little bit, so I'm going to just touch that with the tip of my, of my brush, and that will fix that. Same thing with this red. I'm going to touch that up. Now, some of these are considered staining colors, and so you may not be able to do that as much. Like this red is not coming up, so we'll just leave it. Okay. So the next one will be this one here. We'll make this red, and I'll try to make that one a lot darker. We'll see how that works out.
just take your time. There's no need to rush through it since this is a, a video. You can uh, uh, take your time and pause it and do it as carefully as you want. Okay, so that's the red. Okay, so we have deep red, pink, and we also have the yellow, orange. Um, so let me show you about going back over it and making this other red a little darker. So we don't have to mix it as dark because when we paint over it, it will automatically combine the two layers and make it look darker as it is. the interesting thing about uh, watercolor. It's, um, since it's transparent in nature, uh, one uh, layer over another uh, changes that color and um, it makes it, uh, oh, sorry about that, and makes it um, another color, a little more interesting color. So while I'm at it, I'm going to put in a little bit of darker here around the edge of this to give this some shape. That'll make it look like this is rounded. Rinse out the brush completely and then blend it together like that. Okay. Looks better already right there. All right, so the next one I'm going to do will be the um, that green. Let's go ahead and do the green one here. We'll use that green. Make sure your brush is cleaned out. If you have some red left over and you mix it with that green, it's going to turn it brown. So you really don't need that brown because you can mix that color with uh, green and red. Uh, you can also mix it with uh, blue and purple. Uh, blue and orange, I'm sorry. So let's do the green. I'm also going to do that one in green, so I'll mix up more of this. Okay, so we'll get started on this side. trying to do around these things, around little things, you'll need to use the point of the brush and not press as hard on the uh, brush itself. You can go back over and smooth it like that. Add by touching it, it adds more color onto it. I want to darken it somewhat to this side.
for this side here. I'm going over the line slightly to hide the line on this. Don't really need to do that, but I was just going to show you how you can do it. Okay, so that's the green there. And then also want to do the green on this. So I will add a little more of this green to make it darker. like some of these brush strokes to show so I'm not going to smooth them all out okay so now that I have those two greens I want to do a blue right in here so I'm going to rinse my brush out, add some more of this to this, try to make this one darker because it's behind the others. tend to lean over my work when I'm painting, so I hope that my head is not blocking the view too much. Sometimes you just can't work without leaning right over it to see exactly where your, the tip of your brush is going. It's wiped off the extra paint and now I'm gonna just kind of spread this out a little like that put some lines in there like that like that Okay, so that's the blue. So this one here is going to be purple, and then we'll also use the purple in here and under here. Now, as far as the squiggles on these two right here, we'll still put these in in a little bit, but as far as these, we're going to do those last because we're going to do a subtractive technique for removing the color underneath it. I'll show you that. All right, so we need the purple. I'll mix it in here. And that's the purple.
paint in all directions. Whatever makes it easier to make a curve typically is why I'm doing it in different directions. Because I need it to curve the way it's the form of it. And I'll show you how to fix uh, some more of these little spots here. Now, while I'm doing this, I'm going to put some of this really dark purple over here. But that's a really dark purple, which is more interesting than putting a black to darken. So you don't always have to use black when you want to darken a color. It tends to make it look a dead color. Now this paper uh, is like, it's cardstock. There's uh, other kinds of watercolor paper that, um, you know, you could use if you wanted. And it will do, um, it will look different on your, you know, with your painting. So it's just up to you if you want to get some of your other kind of, some other kind of paper, but then you have to draw the image. Uh, you can't run really heavy paper through a printer. So I'm gonna work on this one right here. Using the very tip of my brush, and I'm going around here. So, so there's little bitty shades of blue here. Apparently some of the blue wasn't completely dry. One of the other things you can do is to take another Piece of paper or a paper towel or your napkin and lay it under your hand and it will pick up the other color instead of you know putting it on your hand so we'll do that and now this one right here needs to be purple as well if you have too much paint on your uh, brush just touch it on there um, so if you notice big puddles going on to your uh, paper then that's you should touch it on there first uh, so that you get rid of some of that These little spaces are a little more difficult to paint because you have to be careful to go around the other ones and there's different shapes here. I'm gonna put some really dark purple over here. Okay, so that's that. Now we have one more to do, and that is, it's going to be an olive uh, drab green and I'm going to mix that up with uh, using the black and the yellow but before I do that I'm going to take the, the yellow 
and put in uh, the squiggle here, but I'm also going to do the red. So let's do that one first. Like that. Now this one is um, yeah, red and yellow, but I'm going to just use this orange and put it in here like that. This one is the blue and the uh, yellow. So I'm gonna take this blue, mix it with that green. And make it look like it's tied around there. There we go. Maybe a little dark. So one of the ways you can pick up the extra color is to dry your brush off on your napkin and then go back over. See how you tend to pick that up? Okay, so now we have the yellow to do. Let me get some of this. It's not gonna show up very well, but we'll fix that. We're gonna be touching these up uh, to make them look more like, um, you know, streamers or uh, ribbons hanging down from that. So, okay, that should be pretty dry around there. So I'm gonna take some of this black and put it over this yellow. And it's gonna make that olive green. And then start painting here may not show up very well as um, the, the variety of color that it is. It may look more like a, a gray, uh, but um, I can see it as, a, as an olive green. I'm gonna paint that all the way down. Okay, touch that up right there, there. All right, so now we're going to uh, start putting in a little more of the shading. Here, we did this wet in wet, and that's one of the techniques. Now we're going to use more of just uh, layering, and so we'll start out with the red. And I'm gonna take some of this red. Now this, we don't have to use red if we don't want to. So I'm gonna show you on the next red one, I'm gonna use blue. Okay, so I'm putting this in here like that. Okay, so that gives it some form. Uh, since I'm using the red, I might as well do the uh, do this a little bit more in here. I want a little more darker red over here. It'll make that yellow pop out better. The yellow right here. Okay. Uh, so that we can now do the green that should be pretty dry right there I'll take this green get some dark here why don't I mix some of that with blue I think that'll make a nice 
shadow on that. So you don't have to use just darker green because green is made up of yellow and blue. This will make it look nicer. Actually, I'm going to do a little more blue. I like that. Now, I'm also doing this dark here because when I go to take the color away for the, um, the string, I want it to show up a little better by that dark part. So, there. Okay, now, two things here on the yellows. Um, I can make a really deeper yellow here and, uh, you know, make it look uh, like it's darker on this side. But another way of doing it would be to take this orange here and use the orange to go over here. I like that. It adds some variety to it. What I would do also, since I used the orange there, I take a little bit of orange and I'm going to make this look more like it's, um, you know, has a front and a back. So on this side, that's a little dark. I'll pick up some of that. I'm going to put the orange there and there. See, and it makes it lighter as I go. That gives it a really nice variation. If there's too much, take your uh, napkin and uh, or paper towel and pick up. Okay, I'll make that a little bit darker right here. Okay, now on the red, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of blue. I like that. That will just give a little, it'll make it more of a purple. See how it adds some variety and interest in there. Now on this one, I think I'll just use a little red since that's part of it. Don't wanna go too dark. What I'm doing is, I'm doing like the bottom part if it uh, of it. Gives it a little bit of variety. So let's do the blue. Let's do a little purple on that. I like that. So we're making it look more colorful. Let's do a little blue on this one. Needs a little more of the blue. I think I'll have to touch the direct color to make it dark enough. Still not dark enough. That might be too much. There we go. That's what I wanted. Put a little shadow under there under there. Same thing here. We can use the blue in many places. There. Okay, so on the orange, we're going to go, uh, let's do this green. It needs to be darker. Um, I like that blue again for that. But if you want to try other ones, just go ahead and do whatever color makes you happy. Okay. Now we need to do this orange. So I'm going to 
take the darkest orange here. off my brush, rinse it out, and smooth out the color. There. I like that. Okay, so let's do, this one needs to be, have a darker red. Why don't we do, let's try purple on this one and see how that looks. some variety. Rinse out my brush and now I'm going to smooth it out. That worked out pretty good. I like that color. You can go over it. Okay. Uh, this blue is that's already pretty dark. Uh, it looks like this side is darker than that. We still need to do this one a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit of the orange. On the yellow. Paint that down into there. these stripes in like that. I think I like that. Okay, so what we have is, I think we need to do this one a little bit. Let's put some blue in that. And then we can work on those other stringers. That's better. Okay, the purple. I'm going to do a little darker purple over here on this side. And I think I'm going to carry that purple over further and around. It'll make that stringer show up. Okay, we're going to do the same thing here, not as dark. Cover up that little hair. There. I think that does that. Okay. Uh, the only one that's left would be this one here. And I need to make that a little darker, so I'm going to take some of the black and mix it in here to make a... It'll be a black olive. Black olive drab. So I'll paint around. And blend it out. Okay, oh, I spilled some, splattered some water on there. That is a problem. Um, when you get in a rush, you tend to do those sort of things, so. 
All right, um, while that's drying, we can do the green one. So let me show you what we do. You take your brush, make sure it is clean. If your water happens to be really dirty, mine's not dirty yet. But if it was really dirty, you might want to dump it out and get a, a fresh one. So I'm going to lay this over here. And I'm going to take just clear water. Make sure there's not too much on your brush. And I'm going to squiggle this down. Now I want to keep that wet, so I'm going to be touching it with my brush. I don't know if you can see what's happening, but... Uh, the color underneath it is coming loose because I'm disturbing that color. I'm picking it up now. I dried my brush and now I'm picking up that color. You could also take your paper towel or napkin and lay it over and rub it a little bit and it comes off of here. Now that leaves that to look like that now. We're gonna go back in after that's dry and paint some yellow over it so it looks like, uh, um, like it's part of that. So now we're gonna do that with the orange one. Now the, the violet tends to not um, come off as well. That's because it's a staining color and so it soaks into the paper, whereas some of the other colors, um, they are not staining and they tend to, see some of the purple came off, but it's not a lot. So we'll have to work on that by taking the brush and rubbing it. Now, this is one way that we damage the point of the brush is if you're doing too much of this. The red seems to be coming up pretty well. I'm going to do it a couple more times. Okay, that's about as good as we're going to get it. So now we're going to go in and put the, the uh, color in it. And if you take a very dense, dark um, of the yellow, and you make it very little water in there, so you're doing a lot more dry brush, okay? You see the, the yellow is really thick. It's hard to paint with that, but that makes it fit in better. I'm going to put a little more water, a little more water on that. Try to get it a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so you can actually see the yellow. And because we have the same type of thing down here, then it looks like it fits over that. Okay, so now we need to do the orange, and we'll see how that orange looks over on top of the purple. Again, we need a really thick amount of paint and that gets really dark like that. I like that. That worked out pretty well. I'm not going to put too much over that because I like it sticking out like that. I should have my water further away. I typically do when I paint. I was trying to have it closer in so that you could see what I'm doing with my brush at all times. Okay, so that's basically uh, everything that we need to uh, do to finish this. And I think it looks like a group of balloons. Uh, it's shaded from dark to light. I like the way this blue is over the red. Um, and how the 
orange went over those over the yellow to give it a, a darkness, which yellow by itself cannot be that dark, okay? So remember those. So now what I, oh, the last thing you do is you assign your name to it. So take a color that you wanna use. I think I'll take this blue green and you use the tip of your brush and just sign it. C-E-R-N-O-S-E-K. Cernosek. Okay, now as far as cleaning up uh, when you're done, uh, one of the th uh, things that's really important is to wash your brush out before it dries. If you're gonna be dealing with putting away your stuff, uh, don't let your brush dry out, just keep dipping it in water. But uh, what you do is take your regular hand soap, make your hand soapy, take the brush and just rub it in there. Now, don't do it too hard because that will cause the bristles to um, get all ragged and not keep the point. You wanna keep that point as much as you can. So then after you uh, do that, you rinse it out and you form the brush into a point just like that. Now, if your brush starts to get all frayed and, and looks bad, you can take the soap and uh, after you wash your brush, put the soap back into it and then you squeeze out the excess and you shape it into a point. The soap will dry in the brush and you leave it overnight uh, or you leave it till the next time you paint and then be sure you wash it out uh, before you use it. Okay, so that's uh, taking care of the brush. Now, on your palette, if you close that, you're going to mess up all of these colors. Uh, if you've gotten some orange on your yellow or uh, purple or in, you know anything on there, let it dry, uh, and then you're gonna clean it off. So you let this paint dry completely, and then you would take a damp paper towel or napkin and then you start wiping off the other color. So if there was some orange on the top of this, I'd let it dry, make this damp, and then rub off the orange. That way you're not disturbing all the color in the bottom and messing it up. As far as all of this, take your paper towels and just wipe up what you have left in here so that you don't have any big blobs of it. And then you're gonna take this apart and wash it. Now, easiest way to take it apart is I close it up a little bit and I pull up on the middle right here and it comes apart like that. And you take that in and put it underneath the hose uh, faucet and rinse it out. You could take an old brush um, or Q-tip and when you have it full of water, rub it in here to get all the extra paint out because the next time you paint, you don't want to put a your yellow into something like the red or any of these because it'll alter the color, okay? So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, there'll be another session pretty soon. And remember, you can go back and do this again and again. And uh, the more times you do it, the better you're going to get at painting. So have a great time and thank you very much.